Hi guys and welcome back to the Female Fitness Podcast. I'm your host Danny, and today is a solo podcast coming at you from Manchester. I'm in one of the meeting rooms um, which I have access to in my apartment block which are amazing and I'm so grateful for and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Manchester, my move to Manchester, my current living situation and the effects that that has had on me both personally and professionally a little bit later in this podcast but as a brief introduction this podcast is basically going to be a little bit of an update from me both personally and professionally a little bit of a chat it's not going to be super structured or on a specific topic but it's going to be a nice little catch-up And I want to talk through some things that I think it will benefit you to hear and also some updates, like I said, on myself personally and professionally. Um, And I just want to catch up with you guys because I've not done that in a good while. So first of all, I have just competed in High Rocks in Glasgow, which is a fitness competition. I did that with my client Holly. It was on Saturday. We traveled to Glasgow on Friday, stayed over Friday night. We were originally going to come back on the Saturday evening after competing in High Rocks. However, we weren't actually racing until just after 5 p.m., which is obviously quite late. And so by the time we'd actually finished racing and would have been traveling back, we wouldn't have got back to Manchester until I think 20 to 12, 20 to midnight. And on top of that, the the trains were replacement buses and all of that jazz. So we ended up actually booking a second night and staying over the Saturday night as well um, and then traveled back yesterday. So on Sunday, it was such a fantastic weekend of fitness, of celebrating what our bodies are capable of, of pushing our limits and just like having so many like-minded people in one room. It was such an electric atmosphere and it was so much fun. Myself and Holly both absolutely loved it and we're really proud of ourselves and the progress that we've made over the course of the last six months or so. Um, and we're proud of our, our performance on the day. Our time for anyone interested was one hour, 30 minutes and 20 seconds. And that was including an extra lap because apparently we like to make our lives 10 times harder than they actually need to be. And basically on the last rap, lap, you end up doing, I think, just less than two laps. And we were like, on every other lap, you do two and a bit laps. And because we hadn't done quite two rep, two laps, we ran an extra lap thinking that we had to do more and we didn't obviously want to get a penalty for not doing enough. So we ended up doing too much. Um, so yeah, that was a really good time to say it's our first time doing high rocks. It's our first time competing together as a team. And um, it's just a great time all around, to be completely honest. So yeah, super proud of us. We had the best time. We both felt absolutely buzzing afterwards. And we have now booked on to London, which is the end of April slash the start of May. It's over the course of two days. I have entered London as an individual, which is going to be a big challenge for me personally, because whereas in High Rocks Doubles, you split the workload in between each kilometre run. So to explain the race as a whole, it's an eight kilometre run that ends up actually being quite a bit longer than eight kilometres. And in between each kilometre, you have an exercise to complete. And the exercises are the ski erg, sled push, sled pull, farmer's carry, burpees, wall balls and walking lunges. And when you compete as a pair, you split the work between you. So one partner works whilst the other partner rests. Whereas when you compete in high rocks as an individual, you have to do all of the work yourself. So whereas at the weekend, me and Holly 
on the skier, for example, had a thousand meters to complete between us. When I compete as an individual in London, I will have to do the entire a thousand meters on the skier myself. So it's going to be a big challenge for me um, personally, but I'm really excited for it and I'm doing it for charity for Macmillan Cancer Support. And whilst I'm there, I'm also going to be supporting my clients, Holly and Deborah, who are going to be competing as a pair on the second day, which is the 1st of May. So I'm really excited for High Rocks London. Cannot wait. Um, and yeah, it's just going to be so much fun. It's going to be an opportunity for myself and my clients to connect and have fun in person um, celebrate what our bodies are capable of to really have something to aim for to push ourselves um, and really really challenge our limits mentally and physically pushing yourself out of your comfort zone comes with so many positives and teaches you so much that can be applied to other aspects of life such as work education um you know business as a whole if you're a business owner if you're a personal trainer or an online coach um and so it's something that that I always encourage my clients to do in different ways that's appropriate to their goals it's so important that we push our limits and that we don't just stay stagnant um and having purpose from a training perspective can can be great so really really looking forward to to high rocks after the competition we went back to our hotel room and ordered delivery, which was delicious. I actually didn't feel hungry at all after the event itself. And that is something that people uh, often people can experience after running um, other endurance events like High Rocks. It either goes one or two ways and people can find that they react differently to that. In that circumstance on Saturday, I definitely find that my appetite dropped but I knew that I needed to eat. Um, and the reason I'm talking through this is just because obviously it's it's really informative and educational for you guys to, to know this. Um, and it's super important for you to know whether you're someone who does these kind of events yourself or you have friends or you coach people that do these kinds of events. Your appetite can take a hit, but it's still important that you eat because you've obviously just done a, a very energy expensive event and your body needs the fuel to recover. And I knew that when I started eating, my hunger would pick up and I'd realized that I needed that food. So when I did start eating, my hunger did pick up and I really enjoyed the food that I had. I personally had sushi with some uh, katsu chicken on the side and Holly had Nando's and we also had Nando's the night before to get some fuel in our system. Food was amazing. And then we, I was absolutely wired from the day I had far too much caffeine before we did high rocks to be completely honest to say it was that time of day and um yeah I was just on such a massive high after the event so we we didn't go to bed I don't think until about midnight had a really good night's sleep and I woke up very sore in the morning but I will tell you what I'm even more sore today so it's Monday today we competed on the Saturday late in the afternoon slash evening Yesterday I was moderately sore. Today I am borderline crippled, um, struggling to walk. But yeah, that's probably my fault because after the event I didn't uh, loosen off or anything. I did walk around yesterday, which is obviously sensible, but um, I feel like I need an Epsom salt bath today and probably some yoga in my life. So yeah, but really nice to have something to work towards to do it as a team and to celebrate what our bodies are capable of together. So I cannot wait for High Rocks London. If any of you guys who are listening are going to be there, let me know because I would love to meet you in person. Um, whether you know you're a client or not, whether you're a coach or not, would be lovely to meet you. And if any of you are listening and you would like to get involved and you would like to work towards a high rocks competition let me know because I can coach you for that and I would absolutely love to do so let me know if you want to get involved with with what me and my clients are doing from that perspective 
Um, so that's a little bit on High Rocks. If any of you have any questions on that, please let me know and I will be happy to answer them. Don't hesitate to drop me a message on Instagram. And so on to, before I move on to Manchester, the subject of Manchester, uh, one of the questions someone did ask me on Instagram that I will answer on here is, am I still doing pole dancing? I'm actually not doing pole dancing right this moment in time, just because I have been focused on high rocks. And also with the move to Manchester, I haven't tried a new pole studio over here yet. I do want to get back into it at some point, but right this moment, it just hasn't been my priority. My priority has been getting settled here. Um, obviously working towards high rocks and prioritizing my client work so hopefully it will make a reoccurrence but right now it just hasn't been um, number one on my priorities list so on to Manchester I have been here three weeks now it seems like I've been here a lot longer it feels like it is where I'm supposed to be in this chapter of my life and genuinely it's early days, but so far it feels like it's probably one of the best decisions I've ever made in my entire life to move here. And I'm so glad that I did. I was debating what to do from a living situation perspective for quite a while. I was toying with the idea of buying a property. I was toy at the time, for those of you who don't know, I I was temporarily living at home. I'd been there for about a year after prior to that, I had lived on my own um, in Rotherham. I'd been renting for, I think about two years in total. I was renting that flat where I lived on my own. And then because I knew that I didn't want to be there long-term, I moved myself back home with my family and ended up there for a year. But I knew that was always temporary. And I just didn't know what the next step was. And I didn't feel very settled because I knew that being at home wasn't where I was going to be long term. And ultimately, with especially with the work that I do, with being self-employed, with working from home, I knew that it wasn't feasible for me to be at home long term. And I didn't want to either because I love my independence. So... Yeah, I'd been toying with the idea of buying a property. I'd been toying with the idea of renting in Sheffield again. I had toyed with the idea of, of moving elsewhere, of doing a bit more traveling. And after going back and forth with all, all of these different potential avenues that I could have gone down, I decided that Manchester was the right move. Now, this is for multiple reasons. First of all, I was kind of like, well, if I'm going to rent, then what's the point in staying in Sheffield when I can work from anywhere? And I kind of thought to myself, well, if I stay in Sheffield now, I'm probably going to end up there for the rest of my life. Is that something that I want? I feel like if I took that route, I would have been, I wouldn't have been making the most of my situation of being able to work anywhere because obviously I work from home. So that kind of ruled out renting in Sheffield because I was kind of like, what's the point? I obviously have my best friend Lydia in Sheffield and I have my family in Sheffield, but ultimately they're always going to be there and the people that are supposed to be in your life will make an effort to visit you wherever you are or at least stay in contact with you over the phone or um, over Zoom or whatever. And you can make an effort to go back and visit them as well. So that wasn't an issue and on the sort of question in my head on whether I should buy a property I realize I'm really not ready to have that kind of tie or commitment yet because I don't know where I want to be for the rest of my life like if I'd have bought and a property is a big commitment like obviously financially but also from the perspective of you know if you buy a property yes you can rent it out but then even then it's quite hard to rent out your your first property um especially if you go down the route of using the help to buy which I was considering doing um 
and yeah, I just wasn't, I wasn't ready for that commitment. And actually I thought to myself, would I be happier living in an apartment or a flat where I'm surrounded by potentially other young people in a place like Manchester where I am now? Or would I be happier having, say, a house to myself? And my conclusion there was that I would be happier surrounded by other young people in a vibrant environment. And I'd rather do that than than have a whole house to myself at this stage in my life. Um, So that is the decision that I made. I just realised I really wasn't ready to buy a property and to have that commitment and also not buying frees up more finances to invest in yourself personally and also in your own business um, which is something that I obviously very much want to do because I want to help and support as many people as I possibly can and I want to reach as many people as I can and that takes a lot um, financially like it costs more than you think to you know invest in in content creation in further in your own education in the back end of the business you know videographers photographers that sort of thing and I I I didn't want to invest that that money that I was investing in my business into a property it's just not the right decision for me right now so yeah, I decided on Manchester. So I was looking on Zoopla, on Rightmove, all of that sort of thing. It kind of felt like it was going to be impossible to move here. I'm not going to lie, because when I was searching, I would go on Zoopla. There would be a flat up for rent that would have been put up on that day. I would ring up and they'd say it would already it was already gone. So people were putting their deposits down on properties to rent without even viewing the property. This was around December time. They were literally going the day that the property went up. So in my head, I was like, I I was looking for weeks and I was like, oh my God, this just keeps happening. Maybe it's not meant to be. And then I decided to try Spare Room. For those of you who don't know, Spare Room is like an app or a website where you can go go on and advertise for a flatmate or for a flat. And my current not my now flatmate Charlotte was looking for someone to replace her flatmate who was moving out so I contacted Charlotte and we originally had a back and forth conversation we then had like a FaceTime we got on so I came to Manchester and looked around her flat and we instantly got on super well and I instantly felt really at home here and um she said to me you know if you want to move in you've got it and I that same day got back to her and said yes because it just felt like the right thing and I actually went to look around another flat after I looked around this flat where I would have been living on my own so without a flatmate and it just felt very cold and I felt like I would have just felt quite cold not very homely um not as safe and secure and it didn't feel as welcoming and I felt like it just felt quite lonely to be completely honest and the guy who showed me around that flat said he could tell I was thinking about something he said what are you thinking about and I said I've just actually been to look around another flat and um really liked it and he said to me with the way that the market is at the moment like if you've seen something that you like and it it works for you go for it because I can tell that you're thinking about it and I immediately texted Charlotte and was like yes so that is the story of how I ended up here um like I said I've been here a few weeks now it's fantastic it has a lot of perks that are in line with the job that I do so the apartment block has several floors of co-working space available um, where I can obviously do my work. And it also has meeting rooms that you can hire out, such as the one that I'm in at the moment. When I say hire out, you don't have to pay for it. So it's included in the rent. Um, But yeah, you have meeting rooms that you can block out for certain time slots. 
So that's like one that I'm in at the moment. That is where I do my check-ins. I hire about a meeting room and I do my check-ins in here where I record podcasts, all of that sort of thing. Um, and so it's perfect for what I need because it's allowed me to separate my work and living environment because I'm not working. Whereas before I was having to work in my kitchen, in my family home or in my bedroom if my mum was home which is obviously not ideal. I knew it was always going to be temporary. It was just a um, a sort of a gap filler for me. Um, but then even, even when I was renting my own flat before I was temporarily living at home, still then I was having to work in my living environment. I was having to work, you know, when you get a flat, it's typically you have your living room and kitchen, in the same room and then your bedroom separately which is what I had so I was I was having to work in my living room slash slash kitchen even when I lived on my own and then when I was living in the family home I was having to do some of my work in my bedroom which was really not ideal and I would not recommend for anybody um so moving here has really allowed me to separate my work environment and my living environment which has been an absolute game changer for me both personally and professionally I am the most productive I have ever been in my entire life. I am the most focused and efficient I have ever been in my entire life. And I am also, I think, the healthiest I've been personally because in my personal time, when I'm in my flat, I am switching off. That is my downtime. That is where I'm cooking for myself. That is where I'm doing my cleaning, doing my washing. And that is where I'm chilling with my friends and um with Charlotte and on my own that is where I read that is my relaxing environment now so it's honestly just changed the game for me and I feel my absolute best self and it's a friendly environment it's a friendly reminder to me and to you guys listening to this of how important your environment actually is it is honestly so key I can't emphasize that enough so if that is something that you think you could improve on at the moment if your environment is something that needs addressing address it because it is a game changer even if that means you know if you are in a situation like I was where you're living at home and you're having to work in your kitchen or your bedroom. If that means going out to work in a coffee shop more frequently so that you can separate your work and living environment, if that makes you feel good, then make an effort to do it. It's worth the financial investment of buying a coffee. Um, if it's going to bring you more productivity, efficiency, happiness um, and health, because ultimately you will see that return on investment, like you will perform better personally and professionally as a result of you being healthier, more efficient, more productive, more energetic, feeling your best self. So make sure you're doing these things and you're addressing your environment, you're auditing that and you're doing what makes you feel good personally and professionally. Honestly, it's so important. Um, and obviously, like moving to Manchester considering I've come from living at home temporarily has been a financial investment for me but let me tell you it has been 100% worth it um and I'd do it again in a heartbeat like honestly just it's been incredible and I feel so much more connected I have great friends here I've made made new friends already I've only been here a few weeks and I aspire to make more new friends anyone in Manchester feel free to hit me up um but yeah I'm I'm loving it and it's such a great vibrant city with so much going on another reason I settled on Manchester is that obviously it, it won't take me long to get back home to visit friends and family it's like 45 minutes to an hour journey whether it be driving or getting the train so it works from that perspective for me and it's also close to the peak district and you guys know I love being outdoors I love a walk I love a hike um and that sort of thing and I love being active so it that's another reason I settled on Manchester so I've got the best of both worlds in terms of I'm in the city but I'm also not far from green space 
um, and being outdoors, which we know that I love. So that is a little bit on, on me moving to Manchester again. Any questions that you guys have on anything that I talk through in this podcast, please drop me a direct message on Instagram um, at Danny Bosworth. And if you want me to do a follow-up episode, if I get enough questions, I'll do a follow-up episode and I'll answer any of those questions that you guys have sent over. So please do keep them coming. Um, And I also wanted to share with you on this podcast a few exciting things that I've got coming up. So I have a client photo shoot on the 25th of March, which I can't wait for. This photo shoot is with one of my clients, Emma who is going to be the photographer. She is excellent. And we're doing it in London. We've hired out a studio so the girls can make the the shoot their own. They can make the pictures what they want in terms of they can wear what they want. You know, they can choose the background, that sort of thing. Um, So yeah, so excited for that. Can't wait. And I've got clients who are both personal trainers and online coaches and clients that aren't personal trainers and online coaches and are just doing it for themselves so some clients are using it from a business perspective for content other clients are just doing this for themselves to celebrate where they're at to push themselves out of their comfort zone to celebrate themselves and this phase of their journey and capture this phase of their journey that they're in it's not about being shredded that's not what my client photo shoots were about they're not about competing with each other. Um, They're not just about our external appearance. They're about creativity. They're about owning your, your, your body, owning the skin that you're in, being confident, like I said, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, which can be applied to other aspects of life. Some of my clients are using it for content for social media, which will help support their business success. It's not about being treaded. And I think it's really important to recognize that you can do a photo shoot regardless of where you're at from a body composition perspective. And it's really empowering to show up to a photo shoot, not having manipulated your body composition specifically for it. And to realize that you can look absolutely fantastic in those pictures without having to have had manipulated your body composition an extreme in an extreme way to look that way um so that's another thing that I want to get across from this photo shoot and then after the photo shoot I'm taking my clients out for a meal in London so that we can all connect with each other so that the girls can make friends and we can create community and enjoy human connection which again is going to be in London I then have I also have a charity photo shoot with Jodie Wrights at the start of March so that's only in a few weeks and I'm really excited for that it is in a barn and Charlie uh, is coming with me who is who I do the flourishing society work that I do with um so yeah we're going to the charity shoot together as a bit of an experience again to celebrate um what celebrate ourselves to push ourselves out of our comfort zone for creativity it's also obviously content that we can use for social media and that sort of thing and also to connect with other like-minded people that are going to be there and the shoot is also for charity so the money that we've paid is going to charity directly um and that is the reason I chose that shoot with Jodie uh to contribute to charity so I'm so, so excited for that and photo shoots are just always a really fun day of connecting with other like-minded individuals and such a good vibe. And Jodie is a fantastic photographer. So really looking forward to that. And another thing coming up that I'm really excited for is I mentioned I can hire out the meeting rooms in my apartment block where I am. You can also hire out dining rooms. So, and when I say, again, when I say hire out, I'm not paying for them. It is included in my rent. So I'm planning a brunch or a dinner party for my clients here in Manchester. And again, I can't wait to get them all together and to connect with them all and for us all to celebrate ourselves, where we're at in our journeys, the progress that we've made so far and the hard work that we've all put into our own processes of self-development and progressing towards our own individual goals 
And I'm so excited to just get them all together and allow them to connect and form form connections, form friendships and to support each other and to um, just have a really great time and all for us all to let our hair down as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to plan a brunch or a dinner party for my clients here in Manchester and I can't wait for that. And obviously all of my clients are welcome. Um, so that is one of the perks of, of working with me and being a part of my team. You get access to all of these great things. Um, and there will be more from where that came from and I'm so excited for it. Another thing I wanted to talk about during this podcast is obviously I mentioned Charlie, who I run the Flourishing Society with. We have a course called Thrive in Five, which is currently underway. For those of you who don't know, Thrive in Five is a five month program um, slash group coaching service. And throughout those five months, basically, we support you in improving your own and or your client's body image, relationship with food, physical health. Um, deal with struggles such as loss of identity, regain your menstrual cycle function, improve your social and environmental health or your clients and all of that good stuff. So we've got Thrive in Five currently underway. Um, there are not going to be frequent launches of Thrive in Five. There will be one or two a year that you can jump on, um, but it's currently in the process of, of going on and every single person that we've got on board is making incredible progress and we couldn't be more proud of each individual that we've currently got on board. So that is something that um, has just been incredible to, to watch these individuals progress, whether it be personally for themselves or professionally in terms of the education aspect of of the program the knowledge they're gaining the confidence they're gaining in being able to support their clients with their body image relationship with food with their physical health all of these these things and we've had such fantastic from feedback from Thrive and Five so far uh which has been incredible and has literally made mine and Charlie's day when it's come through so yeah um we can't we can't wait to see the rest of it unfold and to have more of you on board with Thrive and Five in the future it's just been such a huge success and we couldn't have asked for it to be any better and we can't wait to see more of you become your own best selves or support your clients in becoming their best selves more competently as a result of doing Thrive and Five um and anyone who is interested in either improving your own body image, relationship with food, overall health, um, deal with struggles such as loss of identity that you can commonly have. You need to save the date of the 18th of June. For those of you who came to our previous The Flourishing Society event at the back end of last year, you know how amazing it was. We got incredible feedback. Everyone came away saying that they were blown away, saying how they they gained so much from the one day. Um, we had an incredible meditation teacher there. We had an incredible yoga teacher there. And myself and Charlie delivered a lot of uh, educational and insightful talks. We had group discussions and Q and A's where people opened up and we all shared our own experiences and learned from them. And the next event is going to be even better. So save the date, the 18th of June. We want as many of you there as possible. And we can't wait to, to meet as many of you as physically possible. So that is something that I wanted to mention as well that I'm so excited for. So yeah, this year is going to be a great year. It's going to be the best year yet. And uh, I can't wait to see the rest of it unfold. But thank you for listening to this episode of the Female Fitness Podcast, guys. Thank you for tuning in on a weekly basis. It genuinely means the world to me. I've got, got some great podcast guests coming up. And like I've said to you before, if you ever have any questions after listening to my podcast, or if there's any feedback you want to share with me, please just drop me a direct message on Instagram at Danny Bosworth. If you want to see more of the solo podcast episodes, or if you have any questions for future solo podcast episodes, please again, just drop me a message. 
um, or keep your eyes on my Instagram because I sometimes do ask for questions on my story via a questions box or the anonymous questions link as well. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for for supporting, for listening. It, it means the world. Um, and I hope you are all having a great week so far whenever you're listening to this. But yeah, thank you again for listening. Please do like and subscribe and share that you're listening on your Instagram story if you do enjoy the content on the Female Fitness Podcast. And if any of you are interested in one-to-one coaching, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. I do currently have a couple of one-to-one online coaching spaces available due to clients leaving that have achieved their goals and that are set up for long-term success. So yeah, get in touch if you're interested. And if any of you would like any supplements from Full Ball Sports, you can use the discount code Danny10 at the checkout to save you a little bit of money. That is not a commission code. I don't make money per person that uses that. So I don't get financial gain per person that uses my discount code. The work that I do for Full Ball is education based. But let me know if you have any questions. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you again for listening. I will speak to you next week.